there. Here we are again, back at Burmese, please. Ready to share a little more of what goes into breeding and raising Burmese cats. Now in this episode of Insiders, I'm gonna introduce you to another of our outcrass mama cats, hint, hint. This time, uh, an outcross to the Tonkinese, and then we'll spend some time back with Sunny and Peppermint's kittens. Now, today's featured kitty here is the lovely Salela Azure Sky of Burmese, please, or just Azure, as she's known around here. Um, Azure is a CFA registered blue Burmese, and she's also the first generation offspring of a female Burmese dom made into a solid blue Tonkinese male. Now notice I said solid blue. Well, that's important because the Tonkinese breed includes more color genes than are allowed in the Burmese breed. So when choosing a Tonkinese cat for outcross, we have to be mindful to, to select from the solid tonks and not the mink or the pointed tonks. Now, there you go, she's so pretty. Now, as I said, Azure, she's still a little ornery here. Um, I've just brought her back from two escapades into the garage because she's trying to, you're trying to get run on your own merry little way, aren't you? Um, but uh, Azure is a first genera generation outcross, meaning her father was a purebred Tonkinese. Now we call this generation F1. Now, because Azure's an F1 outcross, her looks are somewhere between a Tonkinese and a Burmese. You may notice her ears are, and muzzle are a little more elongated than the typical Burmese. Her pretty eyes here are a pale yellow instead, I mean, uh, a pale green instead of the typical Burmese yellow. And her tail and body are a little longer and less brick-like than a berm. Now, she does have the most exquisite, though, blue color. You can see it kind of shimmers here. But the most important thing about Azure is that she has lots of very healthy kittens. Speaking of kittens, you might be able to tell from, uh, from your view here that Azure is pregnant. About eight weeks ago, I measured the lovely Azure to my sable Burmese male, the Dry Pirate Roberts. And since gestation in cats is between 61 and 72 days or around nine weeks, Azure will likely be delivering a label, uh, blah, a litter of sable only kittens sometime in the next two weeks or so. Now, this litter of kittens, since they're out of my F1 Tonkinese, will be known as F2. Now, if I was to keep one of her offspring and breed that cat to a Burmese, the next generation would be known as F3 and so on. Now, obviously, the goal for breeders is to select the healthiest, most Burmese-looking offspring to propagate the next generation, and that leads to greater health while maintaining the wonderful Burmese look and uh, people-focused personality. So hopefully you can see Azure and her wonderfully round, let's see, let's, you gotta show everybody because you're so cute, her little round Burmese belly, there it is, she's all poochy. Uh, for some reason, Azure never looks that huge uh, for a pregnant mom, but she typically surprises me by having uh, six, seven kittens. Of course, in any litter, you never know what you're going to get. But in this case, I am sure that all of Azure's kittens will be sable. That's because the male that I mated her to, Pirate, is homozygous for sable and doesn't carry the recessive dilute or blue genes necessary to have the different colored offspring. So once again, let's look at Azure and Pirate's phenotypes and then we can put them in the Punnett Square. Uh, first, let's review what we learned last episode about the black gene. Now, since neither Pirate or Azure are black, they both have the recessive non-black genes shown by the lowercase b, lowercase b. Uh, that's the same. Now the next gene that we're gonna look at is the sable gene, known as uh, capital S for sable and small s for non-sable, also known as blue. Now, since Pirate got one gene from his mother and one gene from his father, his genotype can be represented as big S, big S, or sable, sable. Azure, on the other hand, got a non-sable or recessive 
blue gene from both parents. And we write that as lowercase s, lowercase s, non-sable, non-sable, or in this case, blue, blue. And then the last gene that we're gonna look at is uh, the dark gene represented as D for the dominant uppercase D for the dominant dark color and the lowercase D uh, for non-dark or sometimes referred to as the dilute gene. Breeders will say the cat is dilute and that means um, it's a non-dark cat. Now, since pirate is obviously a dark sable as opposed to champagne, his genotype would be represented as homozygous D, uh, D. Hey there, you wanna go? You wanna go, is this boring you? Am I boring you? Yeah, okay, well you can stay. You can stay or you can go. Uh, and because uh, Azure is blue and not platinum, she carries the uh, dominant uppercase D or dark gene from her dark father and the, the lowercase D or non-dark slash dilute gene from her lighter colored mother. Now, when we put all this in the Punnett square, here we go, I broke down the sables into two, sable dark, sable dark, and here's Azure's non-sable dark, non-sable non-dark. Um, we get uh, the following uh, genotypes for kittens. And as you can see, every single one of them have the dominant gene for sable and the dominant gene for dark. So that means all of the kittens are gonna be brown or sable and they're all gonna be dark. Um, so all of these genotypes equal sable because they all have that uh, the dominant genes in both spots. Um, now, uh, blue, you have to have two recessive genes for sable and a, at least one dominant dark gene to make the blue. Um, I also wrote out uh, the colors for, for uh, for the other, the, the genotypes for the other colors here. So the sable gene here, um, if you have SS, uh, non-dark, non-dark would be champagne. That's the light uh, shade of sable. The light shade of sable is, or the dilute shade of sable is champagne. And the dilute shade of blue is platinum and actually I think my autocorrect was here but this should be lowercase s lowercase s lowercase d lowercase d because platinum is a double recessive gene and that's why it's the rarest and the hardest to get whereas uh, champagne and blue both have just a single recessive gene and then the sable is uh, two dominant genes so the most common um, color all right uh, that's it for uh, your lesson in uh, outcrossing and color genetics. Let's go take a look at those kittens. Okay, here I am outside of the quarters for Peppermint's kittens. I am going to try getting this door open and you can see the reaction when I come in to bring food. Hi there, babies. Let me turn the light on. Oh. Hey, guys, are you ready for food? Here we go, there it is. Oh, they are hungry. Now, if you remember, these guys have been battling illness for quite some time now. And their weights just kept going down and down. So I have been extra attentive to feeding them and they are putting on weight nicely. Now, I'm sorry, so sorry to say that we also lost Vera uh, Bradley this last week. Um, they did get a rebound of this kitten diarrhea. It was very nasty. Um, I'm really thankful to have been able to pull these other guys through. And you can see they're doing really well. But um, I really don't know what hit us. I'll have to follow up with my vet. Um, in terms of this virus, um, but the fecals all came back negative. Um, we tried different uh, antibacterial medications, and again, because it's a virus, they didn't really help a lot. Um,
but these guys are doing well. I'll probably wait a few more days to do their vet visit just because I don't want to stress them by giving them a vaccination at this point. Hi. Say hi, there's Laurel Birch. Laurel Birch is turning out to be a little platinum girl. She's going to be kind of a dark platinum, or as we like to call them, blue, which is kind of halfway between platinum and blue. She is a beautiful little plue, her platinum actually, but, and then her brother Calvin Klein here is doing well too. Hey guys, hopefully we'll get some pictures of you in a little bit doing some, doing some fun stuff because you are awfully cute. So here I am out on our screened in porch. It's a little bit of an overcast day, but not too cold. And, oh, Sunny's four kittens are out here having a little playtime. Unfortunately, because Peppermint's kittens have been sick, we haven't been able to bring them into our bedroom to socialize them. We've had Peppermint's kittens in there. So I thought I'd just bring them out here. And let them run around a bit. Let's see. Let's zoom in on you guys. Look how cute you are. Uh, little Walt is getting a nap here. He's getting a little nap in his bed. There's Walt. Now, these other kitties, mm, just like a Burmese, are pretty much just climbing up me. Oh, there we go. Who's this? That is Edgar and Emily. And I've got Maya on my lap here. She has decided that I am her person. Yep. Where are you, Emily? You peeking up? Let's see if I can get a better view. I also got to grab onto Maya here. Yeah, that's Maya meowing. Here, get down there. Get down there, play. Play with your brother and sister. Look, they're finding fun stuff. Right, guys? Okay, yes, this is great fun. We're out here in the air. We're listening to the birds and the crazy dog on the other side of this table. <gasps> oh, so many fun things to smell. I think they're mostly smelling my older cats. That's This chair is... Uh, is uh, Timbuka and Catspian's favorite, so they're probably smelling big cat. Big as in eight pounds, you know, Burmese big. What do you think, Edgar? What do you think? You think your sister needs to get stepped on? Yeah. Oh, there she goes. She's coming back over to climb up me. Yep, yeah, indeed. There she goes. And now it's just little Emily. Hey, Em. Look over here. You're so cute. Say hi. Oh, that's Sunny, of course. How you doing, son? You're gonna give everybody a little say hello. Oh, yeah. oh that's a good Sunny girl.
Yes, and now I have two kittens trying to climb up my back. Okay, it's kitten chow time. It's just about lunch. Poor Walt always gets squeezed out. Good job, Walt. Push yourself in there. Get Emily out of the way. They are great eaters. They are growing really well. The smallest here is Walt. He is just over a pound. And they go all the way up to um, Edgar, who, and, and actually, I think the three of them, the, the other three are about the same size at just about 1.4 pounds, so just under a pound and a half, which is a great weight for six weeks. Huh, guys? And the vet is going to be coming next week. We'll get your shots. And once he gives you the thumbs up, we'll start taking deposits from your forever families. Peppermint kitten playtime. And who better to draft to play with the kittens than my husband, who is an expert kitten wrangler, kitten rabble rouser. There's Peppermint. Peppermint is no longer nursing these kittens. When they stopped uh, nursing, they started eating solid food. She decided to go back into heat. And at that point, she had no more interest in being the milk bar. So she is, uh, she's done for that for now. So they're officially weaned. And you can see they're, they're looking and acting uh, way more normal. This is exactly how little eight-week-old kittens should be acting, even though they're not near what eight-week-old kittens should be weighing. They've got some catching up to do, huh, guys? Yeah, Peppermint's still pretty much of a kitten herself. We're trying to give Peppermint a couple of months off now that she's not nursing before we breed her again. So hopefully she won't come into heat for a long time. Growling. Who's growling? Laurel, are you growling? Yeah. 